Good day Grade 10s, welcome to the second lesson in your revision work preparing for Paper 2 of um, your June exam. Let's get started. It says, Motibi and Mpumi place a solid compound on a heating plate and heat the substance uniformly at a constant rate. The table below shows the temperature of the object at different times during the experiment. So they've got the time from 0 to 26 and they've got temperature, okay, going from 15.5 to, to 102 degrees. So it suggests a suitable investigative question for this experiment. Well, let's think about this. We could look at um, how long it takes, what would, how long would it take for the solid to reach a specific temperature, or we could say that we would like to see what the phase changes are. So what we could say is, um, basically you want to relate the time to the temperature in your question. Okay, and it says they put in heat the substance uniformly at a constant rate. So what they want to do is they want to possibly look at the different phases. So the question, a suitable investigative question would be either at what temperature does the substance melt? Okay, or it could be at what temperature does the substance um, evaporate, um, or it could be at what temperature does a phase change occur. Any of those. So basically you're relating time and temperature and phase changes. That is the type of investigative question you want. So think about this when you're actually suggesting a suitable investigative question for an experiment. You would basically need to look at what's been measured and then read some of the questions below. It says at what temperature does the compound melt? So you're looking at phase changes. Okay, so let's have a look at it now. It says name one condition that must be kept constant. Okay, to address the suitable hypothesis for this experiment, we'll come back to that, okay? Name one condition that must be kept constant to ensure a reliable result. Okay, so what are we doing? We are taking a solid compound on a heating plate and heating the substance uniformly at a constant rate. So what do we need to keep constant? Well, we could say we need to keep the mass of the solid constant constant. In other words, we need to be able to have it in a container so some of it doesn't run off the heating plate. Or we could say that we need the outside temperature remain the same. The outside temperature to remain the same. Something like that. Basically something that's not going to allow this experiment to be affected. So then it says draw a graph of temperature versus time for the data observed. Okay, so the time is going to be on our x-axis. So let's do, just let me count, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so we're going to do 2 minutes for every one of these blocks. So we've got 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, and 26. And that is the time in minutes. Then they want the temperature, temperature in degrees Celsius. And it goes from 15.5 to 100 comma 2. So I'm going to go up in 5. So it's going to be 5, 10, Right, so now I've written the temperature all up the y-axis. The most important, another important thing that you need to put on your graph is always you need to put heading. So this is going to be time versus temperature. Always tell them what your heading, what your graph is. Okay, now what you need to notice is that I've started zero, started with zero on both the x-axis and y-axis. Secondly, what you need to realize, and this is important, is that the 
units stay the same the whole way through. In other words, I'm going up by 2 every time on the x-axis and I'm going up by 5 every time on the y-axis. If you go up by 2 on the x-axis, you don't necessarily need to go up by 5 on the y-axis. I mean, go up by 2 on the y-axis. You need to just make sure that every gap here is the same. So you can't go writing that this is 15.5 and the next one is 27, etc, etc, okay? You need to make sure that these gaps are equal and ditto. Okay, right, so at 0 degrees, this is at 15.5, so it's at basically 15 degrees. At 2 minutes, we're at 27. At 4 minutes, we're at 37. At 6 minutes, we're at 37. At 8 minutes, we're at 37. At 10, we're at 48. 48, at 12 we're at 59, at 14 we're at 70, at 16 we're at 80, and then we're at 80 till 18 to 22. Then at 24 we're at 91. And then finally at 26, we're at 102. Right, now that I've plotted the points, you can see that it forms a step thing. But now what you need to realize is, and this is very important, you are going to draw a base fit line without a ruler. Now grade 10s, I say this in almost all my lessons with respect to graphs and drawings. I do not have the facility of an eraser on the system. So if your drawing is very squiggly, then please redraw, okay, erase it and redraw. Okay, so now I've drawn my graph. Cha ching Now it says, what would you have observed in the beaker at 37 degrees Celsius? So they want to know what type of thing do we have? Is it a solid or liquid or gas? So what you need to realize is that, yeah, we obviously have a phase change happening. And yeah, we have a phase change happening. So I would say up to yeah, we've got a solid. And then there's some meltings happening. Yeah, we have a liquid. And there we have a gas. And you guys should know the shape of this graph from what you've studied so far. So at 37 degrees, they say, what have you observed in the beak at 37 degrees? And you can see this here is at 37 degrees. So what we're observing is melting okay the solid is changing into liquid so we would have observed that the solid is starting to melt then it says at what temperature does the compound melt well we've just mentioned that is it going to be at 37 degrees celsius at what temperature does the compound boil now boiling is a temperature to which we go from liquid to gas and if you look over here I know it's difficult to read because mine's all scrunchy. There is the temperature. The temperature which stays stagnant, which goes from liquid to gas, is 80 degrees. So therefore we know that 80 degrees is the temperature at which the compound will boil, which will go from liquid to gas. Provide a definition for the word temperature. Now you guys need to go to your textbooks and your notes and go and learn the proper definition of temperature. Or you can actually go to the section, the section, and they'll give you a proper definition. But temperature is basically a measure of the average kinetic energy of the system. That is the definition. It is a measure of how quickly and how much how much energy, kinetic energy, the particles have in the system. Now it says, is this example a chemical and physical or a physical change? Well, there's no chemical change because it hasn't changed. The substance is still the same. In fact, this isn't an example of water, but it could be. The solid could be ice, the liquid would be water, and the gas would be water vapor. So this here is a physical change. Melting and evaporating is a physical change. Now it says, from 16 to 18 minutes, the temperature of the compound remains constant. So from here, 16 to 18 minutes. The temperature of the compound remains constant despite the constant heating. Use your knowledge of intermolecular forces and temperature. Explain what occurs between the particles of substance as the changes 
as it changes phase. Be sure to explain why the temperature remains constant at certain points. Okay, so at that point, what is happening? Yeah, you've got a solid which is changing into a liquid. Okay, yeah, we've got a liquid changing into the gas. But what happens at the point that we change from a liquid to a gas? Bet from year to year, the particles are just vibrating faster, right? They are just vibrating faster and faster and faster. But at this point here, what has to happen? Bonds need to break. Bonds need to break. Well, not actually bonds, because we're not actually changing our chemistry. We can say that the intermolecular forces, the intermolecular forces need to be overcome. Need to be overcome. So that the particles can move away from each other. So what is happening is that at this point here your particles are very close together and they've got strong intermolecular forces, okay, and the particles are moving over each other and very close together. Yeah, the particles are far apart, they're huge, they're far apart, okay, and the reason it happened is because during all this time, yeah, this heat energy which is changing into kinetic energy is being absorbed by the particles and giving them enough energy so that they can break free from each other and the intermolecular forces are being overcome so that the particles can move far apart. And guys, you need to know this and this is part of the kinetic molecular theory, okay? You really need to learn that. Right, moving on. Now it says, consider the production of hydrogen chloride. So you've got hydrogen plus chlorine forms hydrogen chloride. Then it says, balance the equation below and fill in the missing volume of the gaseous product formed. Okay, so we've got two hydrogens and two chlorines, so it's pretty easy to balance. It's just going to be 2 HCl, okay? So our equation is H2 gas plus Cl2 gas forms 2 moles of HCl gas. Okay, now it says, if 8 cubic centimeters of hydrogen reacts with excess Cl2. In other words, there's tons of Cl2. We're not going to be constricted or constrained by the amount of chlorine. It says how much of HCl gas is produced. And the nice thing about this is we can just look at the number of moles. We can say that one mole of H2 produces two moles of HCl, okay, because it's a ratio of one to two. Therefore, 8 cubic centimeters of hydrogen gas is going to form what? It's going to form 2 times 8, which is 16 cubic centimeters of HCl. Okay, and guys, you can only do this volume thing when they're all gases. If this is a liquid, then we'd actually have to look at the number of moles, etc., etc. But because they're all gases, we can just look at moles and um, volume. That's it. Right, that's the second part of your lessons in preparation for your paper two. Have a great day.